welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church in Russellville, Arkansas. And we're glad you're joining us for evening prayer today on July 15th. If you have a Book of Common Prayer, worship begins on page 115. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together a gracious light, top of page 118. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our song for this evening is Psalm 119 verses 25 through 48 that is found on page 765 in your book of common prayer we'll read responsibly by whole verse my soul cleaves to the dust give me life according to your word i have confessed my ways and you answered me instruct me in your statutes make me understand the way of your commandments that I may meditate on your marvelous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take from me the way of lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments for you have set my heart at liberty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness preserve my life. Let your loving kindness come to me, O Lord, and your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have a word for those who taught me, because I trust in your words. Do not take the word of truth out of my mouth, for my hope is in your judgments. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty, because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings, and will not be ashamed. I delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments, and I will mediate on your statutes. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is July the 15th, and in our calendar called Lesser Feasts and Fasts, we don't have anyone in particular that we remember on this day. So I'm actually going to read about William White, whom we remember on July 17th. And what I'm reading comes from the book Lesser Feasts and Fasts. William White was born in Philadelphia on March 24, 1747, and was educated at the college of that city, graduating in 1765. In 1770, he went to England, was ordained as a deacon on December 23rd, and as a priest on April 25th, 1772. Upon his return home, he became assistant minister of Christ in St. Peter's from 1772 until 1779, and rector from that year until his death on July 17, 1836. He also served as chaplain of the Continental Congress from 1777 to 1789, and then of the United States Senate until 1800. Chosen unanimously as first bishop of Pennsylvania in 1786, he went to England again with Samuel Provost, Bishop-elect of New York, and the two men were consecrated in Lambeth Chapel on Sunday, February 4, 1787, by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York and the Bishops of Bath and Wells and of Peterborough. Bishop White was the chief architect of the Constitution of the American Episcopal Church and the overseer of its life during the first generation of its history. He was the presiding bishop at its organizing general convention in 1789, and again from 1795 until his death in Philadelphia on July 17, 1836. He was a theologian of significant ability, and among his protégés, in whose formation he had a large hand, were many leaders of a new generation such as John Henry Hobart, Jackson Kemper, and William Augustus Muhlenberg. 
White's gifts of statesmanship and reconciling moderation steered the American church through the first decades of its independent life. You may have noticed as I read the biography from Lesser Feasts and Fasts that William White actually journeyed to England to be ordained as a deacon and a priest. And that was really common. In fact, it was necessary because um, initially there were no Anglican bishops on the soil of the colonies. And so whenever someone wanted to be ordained a deacon or a priest, things that have to take place via uh, a bishop, then that person would have to journey to England and back. And I've read that as many as one in four did not return alive from that journey. You can imagine also that there were no confirmations that were held on American soil then, if there were no bishops who were here. And when the American Episcopal Church became independent from the Church of England, there had to be some mechanism for priests to then become bishops who would serve the American Episcopal Church. Samuel Seabury was the first priest to be ordained a bishop in the Episcopal Church because priests had to declare loyalty to His Majesty when they were ordained and when they were ordained a bishop as well. Samuel Seabury had to be ordained in the Scottish Episcopal Church as a bishop by Scottish Episcopal bishops. But by the time that Samuel Provost and William White were ordained, there was a mechanism in place, a process by which American um, priests could be ordained as bishops through the Church of England. So Samuel Provost and William White went over and became bishops. We then had three bishops, and three bishops can ordain subsequent bishops. So from then on, the American Episcopal Church was able to ordain its own clergy at all levels. So I just wanted to point that out to you as an interesting um, kind of part of our history as the Episcopal Church. Let us continue with the Song of Mary on page 119 as we say together, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 120. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Suffrages B are found on page 122. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of William White and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O Lord, who in a time of turmoil and confusion raised up your servant William White to lead your church into ways of stability and peace. Hear our prayer and give us wise and faithful leaders that through their ministry your people may be blessed and your will be done. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us. For evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase upon among us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, God Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.